Welcome back to Rugby M here on Main Television. We're into part three now, and the first thing I need you to do is make a note. Follow us on Twitter at Rugby M. Also, we've got Periscope now, brand new app. We're getting our faces out there, it's really good. Check out our website, rugbym.co.uk. Got loads on there, some fantastic articles, some great writers. Try time for Alan Fox! <laughs> right now, as we celebrate the try, we're going to go over to see AIM Education, Tyrone McCarthy and Cal Harrison. That was out walking my dog in Bromley. <laughs> and I got a distinct smell of cod coming from one of the buildings. I look through the window and here is Tyrone McCarthy, the legend himself, old okay, KL lads, here in Bromley doing some mentoring with some young kids. What, what are you up to, Paul? What are you doing? Yeah, um, just come down to AIM Education, uh, just to help out and do a bit of mentoring with the kids down here. How did you get into that? Um, I've, I've run my own project, the Fulber project, and I um, set up with a couple of friends just working out with kids in Fiji, right. um, doing a bit of mentoring and development over there. And we were looking at ways to bring it out over to the UK, and this was the perfect setup where I thought I could get involved. There's a fair few of our Leeds players uh, actually try to get involved with some of the Leeds City Council um, as a mentor as well for some kids who have probably maybe gone off the rails a little bit. Uh, it's really gratifying thing to do, it? As a, as a rugby player as well, sometimes they've got a, a fair few hours in the afternoon to go do that with the young kids. What, what exactly do you do with them? Yeah, um, well, my role is uh, probably step back a bit and just take them to the side and just have a bit of a chat with them, try and be one of their mates more than uh, one of the teachers. But... Yeah, just trying to give them a bit of direction and just use my experiences through life and trying to push it onto them and hopefully uh, encourage them to go down the right paths. It's a great uh, point, that experiences in your life. I guess rugby league is a great sport to learn about persistence and resilience and getting up after an ox. Is, is that what you use to empower them, your, your journey in rugby league? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think my career has been fairly up and down. I had some good highs and then some real lows in it. And, personally in, in my development but like you say it makes you the person you are and if you can share that journey with other people and hopefully it can inspire the, these young kids to go on and do better things and I'm um, more than happy to give up my time. <laughs> I'm here with Carl Harrison, the founder, the boss, the creator of AIM Education. It's a great scheme that you've got going on. I was uh, obviously very impressed with it being a local one that initially started at Stanley Lane Services in local areas that I grew up in. But just tell us really quickly a bit about AIM Education and what you do on a daily basis. Uh, we've got a variety of things going on. Uh, as you say, when we first started, we started down at Stanley Rugby League. Uh, they were very good to us, did a really good job and uh, we've, we've grown, we've evolved and we've managed to work with a lot more young people now. Uh, primarily with young people that are disengaged from mainstream education. Sounds quite complicated, basically it's young people that aren't suited to being in sort of classroom environments, whether that's through behavioural issues or emotional issues. And what we try to offer is something a little bit different, so something a bit more practical, yeah. uh, a bit more involving sort of their, uh, their sort of favourite subjects, uh, making sure that they're engaging a little bit more, a lot more one-to-one -one stuff, uh, working with mentors like Tyrone, uh, and making sure that sort of young people actually feel like they've, they've got a belong, uh, belonging to a sort of place. Uh, that's why this place has been so important to make it so that young people feel like that it belongs to them uh, and they're invested in, into the place. You've got a new one as well, haven't you? I saw it when it was just a shell and uh, now it's nearly there, isn't it? It's, it's it is, we're definitely getting there. It's sort of, uh, as I say, we evolved from Stanley. We've been over at the church hall for a little while and now we're moving into his own place. Uh, and we sort of, with that, it means we can work with a lot more young people uh, and we can offer a lot more sort of subjects. Uh, we can deliver a lot more sort of outcomes at the end of each academic year. Uh, we're also offering the school holiday camps to young people. Uh, uh, the sort of junior leader programs and now because we've got this place it means we can do a lot more things. Every new place, every charity like yourself needs to raise money and we've got a really challenging <laughs> lead check coming on, haven't we? Sure. we? We have definitely, as you can see it's a bit of a building site, it's costing us quite a bit of money. Um, we're hoping to sort of raise a lot of money towards the building of this place through Leeds Trek. Uh, it's sort of a big charity walk around Leeds. Uh, last year we did it, it was sort of a big a big feat last year, 130 kilometres, we learnt a lot of lessons. Wow. Yeah. This year we've sort of cut it down a little bit, 5k, uh, 30 kilometres, so those people that aren't necessarily sporty but fancy giving themselves a good challenge, yeah. uh, or people that want to give themselves a real challenge, they can do the 60k option, uh, and again that's for sort of people that are a bit more um, 
sort of concentrating on doing sort of real fitness challenges. How can people sign up? Uh, so if they go to the website, so www.aimeducation.co.uk, you'll be able to find the information on there. Alternatively, have a look on Twitter at Leeds Trek. Uh, so I think it's hashtag Leeds Trek uh, or at Leeds Trek. Uh, and the same if you go, there's also the Twitter for Aim Education uh, or Facebook, uh, any of the social media networks, uh, you'll be able to find it on there. Right, I'm here with Mark Green, the uh, owner of Bradford Bulls. Mark, it's been a great season so far. Well, it was up until we started here today. <laughs> it, it's half time and it's 14 nil. How you can read. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, you're going into the middle eights. For the club, is the opportunity to get back to Super League, is that, is that what's on the agenda for yourself? That's all we've been focused on from the beginning of the season. Um, we think we've got a good squad, we think we've got a great spirit. Um, we've, we, we've obviously, for obvious reasons, rested uh, a number of key players today. Um, that's not to say that the, the players that are on the park are any lesser, but we're giving them an opportunity where ordinarily they might not have got one. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, the middle eights will, or the super eights, whatever their title they've now got, hopefully will uh, bring us the success that we all crave. OK, our Wakefield. Salford coming down to Old So you're looking forward to hosting some of the Super League clubs and showing what the team's got for next year? Yeah, listen, you know, we, we're going to have four home games, four games at home. It looks like our home games are going to be Widnes, Salford, uh, yourselves and Sheffield. So we've got a mix of both Super League and, uh, and Championship teams. And yeah, listen, it, it, it's not going to be easy, but uh, nothing, nothing is, is it? And uh, the rumour is you've got a big signing on the way. Wait and see. <laughs> Right, I mean, after the game, fantastic win here with the Halifax coach, Richard Marshall. Making this job look easy, mate. <laughs> no, it's never easy, and that wasn't an easy game. Uh, the first half, we were, we were pretty much in control. I thought, thought our line speed was good, our defence was good. We forced them into a lot of errors. Uh, second half, we knew they'd come back. They did it, they've done it to us on a couple of times this season, uh, where we built up a bit of a lead. But testament to our players today, I thought they're outstanding to come away with a win, um, which could have gone either way. Do you remember last time Halifax beat Bradford? You're going to tell me it was when I was playing or it something like that. It was when you were playing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Someone mentioned that. In fact, the assistant coach, Chris Rose, reeled off the team about three times to me. But, um, yeah, let's not get carried away. It was a long time ago. Yeah, Great yeah. for the fans. Listen, yeah, that was yeah, outstanding yeah. For, our, for our supporters. It's probably been a long time waiting, a long time overdue. When the Alphax job came up, why did you go for it? I, I could see that a vision. Uh, you know, that there is... I think the club's clearing what they want to do and what they want to achieve, um, you know, and to be a part of that, something exciting at the moment is is why I wanted to, to come over to Halifax, work with this group of players as well, which is important. And uh, it's, there's a lot of potential here. As you saw today, the atmosphere was outstanding. Unbelievable. It was, it was a good game. And, uh, you know, and if we can get a few more of them over the next few weeks, which we probably will do, uh, we'll see what, what we can do again next year. What do you make of the new concept, the, the uh, Super 8s? I think it's brilliant. You know, I think you don't quite really know how it's going to pan out until you're probably in the mix. You know, it's been brilliant for us. Uh, we we've built momentum over the last uh, two months, yeah. uh, which has got us into a position where we're fortunate enough to be in the Super Eight, uh, the Middle Eight. So it's finishing third. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I've heard that as well. So that's, that's yeah. Again, for, it's for it's the players. A, it's a massive achievement. It is. It is compared to what you've spent, compared to other clubs. It's yeah, huge. yeah. We 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 had it. We were on a, a lower. Um, uh, portion of the pot from yeah. Super League for where we finished last year um, so it, under them circumstances yeah the players have done fantastic and listen all credit goes to them they've worked really hard this year and I've, I've challenged them on a lot of occasions and they've, and they've come up with the right answers Scotty Morell there end of the game punching the sky he's, he's we had on the show we had him on the show last week he's a real character he really loves the club and to have a player like that who could have gone to play Super League any time really for a lot of clubs on him what does it mean for for the club to keep someone like that, yeah, it's out. You know, he's been great for me personally coming into the environment. 
he's, he had a real good captain's knock today. Yeah. I thought his game management was, was, was first class. Uh, I thought Richard Moore, again, another <laughs> Super League player. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, he's he's reju rejuvenated himself, and you know he's rolling back the years there. So, you know, and we've got people like Dane Manning and Ben Johnson at the other end, and you know it's very exciting for us. But we listen, we can't get carried away here. You know, we've yeah, done yeah. some good stuff over the last few weeks, but we'd hate to undo that over the next few weeks. Have you uh, had Richie Moore singing yet? He's a good singer, isn't he? He's apparently, a great singer. yeah, I've Fantastic. heard that. I've heard that. He's, he, well, we've just sang the team song there, and he, 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 he was he was up the there. Team song? Well, I can't tell you. Come on, Rich. No, no it's uh, sing for us. It's um, Ben Kay's come up with it. Has it? Yeah, and, and, and to be fair, he didn't play today. You know, he was we, we sort of rested him. He had an arm injury, so for him to come and um, come in the changing rooms and strip himself off and sing the song was was brilliant. Awesome, mate! Congratulations. Thank you very much. And good luck in the Super Eights. We'll see you back down here for another Thank you very much. Rugby. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Um, it's been a fantastic day, and you were in the, at the end of the game, running around. Come on! <laughs> Just give us a, give us a. <laughs> was it what a game? You, you said it's your cup final. <laughs> yeah, obviously we've been working hard all season, and uh, Bradford are a quality team, and and uh, they come back in that second half and put a bit of a fright up us, but we stuck together, defended well, and. Forced them into an error and Stevie Tyra went 30 oh, metres. I didn't think they were going to finish it slower <laughs> than me. <laughs> Don't know about that. <laughs> um, fans, it, mate, the fans today, they were, they were so passionate for the club. It was so. It's, I've come back to the club today, it's been a while, and there's a complete change of atmosphere and ethos about the place. It's massive, mate. It's a bit, I think there's a bit of a buzz going around the place. Uh, fans are coming back through the door and... And uh, created a great atmosphere to it. Bradford fans as well, they were great. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't shut up. I love the Bradford fans. They did it, uh, they did it at Blackpool, they don't shut up singing, but uh, our fans were great today. Stay tuned for part four here on Made TV. We're still down at the Shea into the second half. It's getting really exciting now. Luke Ambler coming up after the break. We're